At this point, I would like to introduce our special guest speaker, Mr. Algernon Cash. Algernon is Managing Director for Wharton Gladden, a boutique um, real estate banking firm. In 2003, Algernon and a group of private investors created Wharton Gladden to provide small and business middle market, small and middle market businesses, owners, real estate directors, developers, and investors with commercial mortgage banking, private equity, and capital markets advisories. Today, Wharton Gladden has strategically advised clients on over $1 billion in whole loan acquisitions and liquidations. And the firm has successfully closed over $125 million in multifamily and commercial real estate loans. Algernon serves on the board of directors for Trebek, an association that is dedicated to promoting economic development, balanced growth, and protecting private property rights. He serves on the board of directors of NAIOP, an association that is committed to providing commercial real estate developers and with innovative strategies education, and networking. In 2007, Algernon organized a variety of real estate associations in the Piedmont to host the Triad Dealmakers Symposium, an event that promoted regional networking and education for over 200 attendees. Algernon has received a variety of prestigious awards and recognitions. In 2006, he was named a Paul Harris Fellow with Rotary International. In 2008, business leader media named him one of the 30 Triad Movers and Shakers and one of 24 impact leaders in the real estate industry. Algernon is growing to become a speaker in demand, and we are honored to have him this afternoon with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Algernon Cash. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, um, Larry, for that, that great and warm introduction. Um, before I get started, I. Um, would definitely like to take a moment and just thank Candace Fisher for thinking about me and asking me to be here with you all today. I also want to express my gratitude to the faculty uh, that I was able to meet when I toured your facility. I'd like to thank them for their extreme hospitality when I came over to visit. And lastly, I recognize that today is a milestone in the lives of all the graduates and their families, and I appreciate each of you for allowing me to share my time with you all today. And I was standing in the back and had the opportunity to meet a few of the graduates, um, so I know they are definitely excited to be able to reach this momentous day. You know, as I was, just to give you guys a quick bit of advice before I jump into my presentation, I, I was sitting here and listening to Larry introduce me, and was reading some of the highlights that you have here in the program of some of my accomplishments. And as I listened to that introduction, it reminded me of an experience that I once had while I was speaking at a conference in Greensboro. And I was hosting two sessions over here at Curry Convention Center. And during one of the breaks while I was hosting these sessions, I decided to head over to Four Seasons Mall and do some browsing around. Uh, I entered one of the stores over at Four Seasons Mall, and I encountered this delightful young lady who greeted me and she says, Mr. Cash, thank you for stopping by today. If you need anything, then I'm here to help. And she was just this delightful individual. And it, it, ne it didn't necessarily surprise me that she knew my name. During the time I was hosting, how many listen to 97.1? During the time I was hosting a radio segment called Cash Money Tuesday with Buster Brown on 97.1, so when this young lady recognized my name, it didn't necessarily surprise me. You know, I also own a firm here in Greensboro, and I'm involved in all these community initiatives that you just heard about. So again, I said, okay, well, she knows me. So I proceeded to do some shopping and looking at some shirts and ties and et cetera. And everywhere I went, this young lady would follow right behind me and she says, Mr. Cash, can I help you with anything? Mr. Cash, can I show you this? Mr. Cash, would you like to try, try this on? And she was just so delightful. And as I was getting ready to check out and I decided that day because she was so delightful that I would purchase something, I decided to buy a shirt and tie. And as I was getting ready to check out, I stood there at the counter and she again showed me such great service. Mr. Cash, you got to make sure you come back and visit us. Mr. Cash, we want you to do this survey card. 
And finally, on my way out of there, I had to ask this young lady. I said, I, I, I've got to ask you. you. You all provide great service here. I have to ask you, how do you know my name? Do you listen to the radio show? Were you at one of my speeches? Were you in the community when I was doing some volunteering? How do you know my name? And she looks back at me and she says, well, Mr. Cash, you still have your name tag on. I've seen your name on your name tag. <laughs> and it reminded me that no matter how far you go, be careful to start believing your own hype. All right? All right, all right. Again, I recognize how momentous today is for many of you. And I thought long and hard about what I could share with each of you that would help to sustain the fire that has been lit in each one of your spirit. You know, often people will invite me to give a speech in hopes that I may motivate their staff or motivate their colleagues or even motivate their students. However, I want to be clear. I am not a motivational speaker. And in fact, I do not believe in external motivation. Over the years, I have grown to learn that motivation can only come from within. You either are committed to achieving your goals or you are not. Now, I do believe that people can be inspired by the experiences of other people. And that inspiration can jumpstart the self-motivation that many of us need when we're seeking to achieve success in our own life. So I want to share a special concept with each of you today. And it's a concept that I've developed that helps me to achieve my goals. And I've named this concept locking in. I want to say it again because I want each one of you 10 graduates to take this with you today. Locking in. And the concept of locking in requires you to focus more on yourself and less on others. We spend a tremendous amount of energy focusing on others. We waste our precious time trying to fix our friends, fix our spouse, or even fix our loved ones. We become preoccupied with how others might see us and how and, and less occupied with how we see ourselves. However, my grandfather often reminded me that if you want to change the world, then start by changing yourself. So many in the audience may be wondering about this concept of locking in and how do you lock in? How do you set out on this journey of locking in? And I define the, the idea of locking in very simply. It all comes down to understanding the power of purpose. The importance of having a vision. And the necessity to understand what your principles are so that you can gain the stability that you so desire in life. So when we talk about purpose, what does that mean, purpose? How many in the room here this afternoon know what your purpose is in life? By a show of hands, I'm just, I'm just curious. Do you know what your purpose is in life? And only a few hands have gone up. Even my very own graduate friends not maybe are still not quite sure what their purpose is in life. And what I've come to learn over the many years is that many of us are waiting on someone to tell us what our purpose is. See, we're waiting on the phone call from the boss man to call us into the office and say, Omar, this is your purpose in life. We're waiting on our parents to call us downstairs to the kitchen table and say, Lindsay, this is your purpose in life. Even some of us are waiting on the, the voice in the sky to tap us on the shoulder and say, Zachary, this is your purpose in life. Well, I'm, I'm here to deliver the news today, this afternoon, that all of you that are waiting will continue to wait.